United Methodist Church, we're so honored and grateful that you are with us this morning. We had to make a very tough call this morning as to whether we would be worshiping outdoors or indoors. The good news is we are worshiping this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We understand there are quite a few people that are in their cars that are on their way to join us here in the building that went to the park instead. So we're going to give them a few extra minutes to join us. We thank you for joining us online. So if you are in your car and joining us online, please know we'll be here whenever you get to the church this morning. That's not a problem. Let's join in an opening prayer. God of grace and glory, open our eyes to witness the blessings around us. Open our ears to listen to your Holy Spirit. Open our mouths to praise you, our minds to understand your truths, our hearts to receive your love and share it, and our hands to serve you with joy. Amen. Amen. Please enjoy some extra music from our praise band this morning. I picked this uh, first song because it's about uh, the splendor of summer coming into bloom in God's creation, and we were going to be in the park. And I thought it was going to be thematic, and uh, instead we were in this lovely sanctuary. Uh, so, but I invite you to, perhaps uh, when you are out, in, assuming it doesn't storm out in nature later, uh, to, to remember this song or to think about your favorite places, uh, the beauty of the world God has created, uh, as you listen to this song. Here's a hymn to welcome in the day Held in the summer's early sway all the bulbs are coming in to begin Thrushes bleeding battle with the rains Disrupts my reverie again Pegging clothing on the line Training Jasmine how to vine up the arbor to the door and more. Standing on the landing with the war you shouldered all the night before. Once upon it, yellow bonnets, garland all along. You awaken, day was breaking, a panoply of song. Summer comes to Springville. A barony of ivy in the trees, spanning out its empire by and all the branches burst to bloom in the bloom. Heaven sent this cardinal maroon to decorate our living room. Once upon it, yellow bonnets, garland all along. You were waiting Day was breaking, a panoply of song. Summer comes to Springville. Years from now, when this old light is in to Springville Once upon it Yellow bonnets Garland all along You awaken Day was breaking A panoply of song 
Summer comes to Springville. Yeah. And this is one you do know. So if you want to sing along, I can hear whether or not you do. <laughs> That was more threatening than I'd intended. No, <laughs> sing along in body, spirit, in heart, in mind, in soul, however you are led. Or don't. Uh, just vibe. Vibe and pray, meditate, whatever you are led to do. you know this one too. It's not in your bulletin, so we'll see how well you remember it. Because we're, uh, we go live, folks. We don't go on because we're ready. We go on because it's showtime. <laughs> but I think, I think you're familiar with this one anyway. So yeah, again, <laughs> sing, pray as you feel led. The whole earth is filled, filled with your glory, filled with your glory. My whole life is filled, my whole life is filled.
cast out at sea Even in death You're always with me And when I am fearful I won't be afraid Oh Spirit, remind me Your presence remains The whole earth is filled, filled with your glory, filled with your glory. Our whole life is filled, our whole life is filled. And welcome to Monroeville United Methodist Church. My name is Susan Burkett. I am a certified lay speaker, and it's an honor to be able to be worshiping with you this morning. Uh, July 1st is a big time of transition in the United Methodist denomination, and this year our congregation is feeling that time especially hard. Um, Pastor Ed is moving to his new congregation up in Edinburgh, so we send him with our deep thanks and appreciation and best wishes to him and Kathleen and Alicia. Today also is Amanda Mitchell's last Sunday with us before she begins her appointment at both Thorn Creek and Emory Chapel UMCs up in the Butler District. Um, she'll be maintaining her position as coordinator of Young People's Ministries at the Conference Center. Uh, so we send her as well our deep thanks and appreciation and our sincerely best wishes to her as well as to Samuel and Olivia and Captain as well, I hope. We are blessed with our new pastor, Reverend Kelly Smith, who will be officially appointed here on Friday, July 1st. Reverend Kelly will be leading us in worship next Sunday, and we are all eagerly anticipating that. So we send Reverend Kelly, along with Jeremiah and Micah, our warmest welcome, and pray that they will quickly feel our love and respect and appreciation. So whether you are joining us on site or online, we warmly welcome you and know that you are a valued part of our congregation, whether you are sitting outside or inside, maybe you are at home or away at school or at work. Someone might even be in a swimming pool this morning, I don't know. <laughs> Wherever you might be, whether you're watching us live or at a later time, we welcome you. Uh, I do believe we have a few opening announcements, Bon. First off, let me start with an apology. The decision to make on Sunday mornings is never an easy one. Lyman and I sat down about mm, 7.30 last night at South Park Theater, and the gentleman sitting in front of us is talking about hoping his golf outing doesn't get canceled for rain. And I looked at Lyman and said, crap, Ed's <laughs> gone. Kelly's not here yet. We don't have a call list of what we're doing if it rains tomorrow. <laughs> so I threw together a list, a text list, to a handful of us and said, okay, we'll follow up at 6.30 in the morning. Kevin and I were on the phone looking at about five different apps. It ranged from anywhere from 3% to a 90% chance of rain at 7 a.m. with seven to 10 mile wind gusts. The wind gusts scared us more than anything. We've spent a lot of money on new equipment for the park and I didn't want to see it on the ground. Nor did I want to hear all the um, 
back and forth when it didn't live stream well because of the wind blowing across the mic. <laughs> it would have been extremely difficult. So to those that made it to the park, I do humbly apologize. We did try to get that out by email and Facebook as quickly as we can this morning. I would encourage you, please, on Sunday mornings, make sure you're checking those sites just in case something would happen. My second announcement this morning, you may remember a week ago, or maybe two now, I had made the announcement there were flyers in the back of the church and that Lisa was going to hurt me if I didn't make that announcement. Well, I wanted to remind you because at that point we were at the park and there was nobody here. There are still about 100 flyers in the back of the church. My hope is between services when I go back there's maybe 50, 60 less. <laughs> I would strongly encourage you to please take them, take them to your neighborhood, your senior centers, your libraries, your post office, wherever has a community bulletin board you can put it on and put that flyer up. <clears throat> we are currently setting at about 45 vendors. So that's a decent number. I'm really pushing for about 15 more. <laughs> so um, that being said, a quick reminder also to those that are on the uh, craft show team, we will be meeting Thursday night, 6 o'clock, in the library. And i got to call Karen tomorrow and make sure I can get that on the calendar, but we'll be there. <laughs> oh, Karen's off this week. <laughs> so, Karen, you <laughs> uh, please make sure you do read to your bulletin. There are some important announcements in there, including about 4th of July, which is coming up very quickly. Band. I invite you to join along with this. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to stand, this feels like this is it's like a stomp and clap and kind of uh, tent revival song. So if you'd like to stand, go for it. If not, uh, as you are led, sit and vibe, pray, meditate, sing along. Enjoy. You're a rescuer, you're a rescuer, we are free from sin forever. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There is good news for It's good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, the one religion fell. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. You're a rescuer. You're a rescuer. We are free from sin forever. Sweet the sound, oh how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord our rescuer. You are beauty for the blind man, which is for the poor, you are friendship for the one the world ignores, you are pasture for the weary, rest for those who strive. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. You're our rescuer. You're our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. So come and be Yeah. 
mountain for every affliction. Krager is our staff parish relations chairperson. Please come on up, Larry. Good morning. Uh, once again this morning, uh, we would like to pause uh, to extend our thanks and best wishes to a member of our mom family who is departing for other challenges and other ministries. Um, today, of course, that person is Amanda Mitchell. Um, and uh, as you know, Amanda has been appointed to be the pastor of two churches in the Butler District, and she'll be starting those duties this week, as, as Susan mentioned. And uh, we do want to, you can come on forward, and, and uh, also we want to obviously recognize uh, Olivia and Sam, too. Um, uh, Captain the Dog has been a part of the Park <laughs> Service, but I guess he can't. <laughs> he's missing the it. captain's home uh, today, so he wanted to come on. <laughs> Uh, when I, I think, trying to think about uh, ways to summarize Amanda's time with us, um, one of the things that popped into my head was the old adage, if you really want to see something get done, ask a busy person. Sure. And that's been the case with Amanda, who has a position uh, uh, already at the conference center, and she has been a student and a mom, and by the way, here she's been in charge of the Sunday school uh, and the uh, youth program uh, in a lot of ways with the retreats um, and uh, last week confirmation, um, which was a big process. Um, she has been involved in the head of, as head of preschool board and uh, she has updated um, safe sanctuary policies. Um, and uh, during COVID when we weren't able to gather physically, she was very much a part of the online ministries to kids with the Zoom meetings. And, and I've been on a few Zoom meetings myself uh, with Amanda. And while she's waiting on uh, maybe, Su maybe uh, Samuel or uh, Olivia's uh, meetings to be adjourned, she's sitting in the car on the, on the Zoom meeting and, and making, uh, I think you have more than 24 hours in your day. I'm not sure how you do that. <laughs> but um, so we do want to express our thanks and our best wishes for Everyone is invited after the service to stop at the Fellowship Hall. There'll be some uh, snacks and everything there for you. And uh, please wish Amanda well and, and her family. And uh, thank you again. All right. Now I need the kids to come up. Come on, kids. Even youth, you can come up too. I have a present for you. <laughs> Tammy's coming. Oh, Sa now Samuel decides to come up. He didn't want to help me earlier. All right, come on, Hunter. <laughs> Arabella, you coming up? You don't have to say anything. You just have to sit here. All right. Hey, buddy, come over here. We moved, I know, we're, we're in a different spot. Okay, so a book that Olivia and I enjoy um, is, is a book called The Kissing Hand, and it is about a raccoon family, and the raccoon child goes to school and is away from his mom, and so his mom gives him a kiss on his paw and tells him that no matter where he goes, his mom's love goes with him. And so now I'm going to cry because <laughs> I'm looking at Olivia, too. Um, now, I don't have the book anymore, but we remember the book. 
And um, so what I want to do for these guys up here is I have um, a little heart keychain. And that is to remind you that wherever you go, God's love goes with you. And so you can decorate that heart any way you want. You can paint it. You can color it. You can put stickers on it, whatever you want to do. Hang it somewhere that you remember how much God loves you because that's the most important thing for me that you remember um, as I move on. And um, in case no one has ever told you this, because I didn't hear this a lot as a kid, um, God is for you. God loves you. God is proud of you. God sings over you. And uh, I'm blessed to have been allowed to be with your kids for a few years. So just know that God is with you no matter where you go. All right? Let's pray real quick. <laughs> um, Lord God, we are grateful for this time we have together. And um, we are thankful that you love us so well. And that no matter where we go, that we are still tied together because you are our God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. As we enter our time of gratitude, I remind you that we worship a God of abundance. God doesn't just give us a little bit. We receive in abundance and respond accordingly. As you take these moments to, th to say thank you to God, I invite you to meditate on these verses of overflow. God is able to make every grace overflow to you. With your faith rooted in Christ Jesus as Lord, you will overflow with gratitude. My lips overflow with praise for God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for giving us an overflowing amount of grace and hope. And may we respond with an overwhelming, overflowing amount of praise and thanks. For our time of offering, I do invite you to give your gifts, whether on site or online, as you feel led. Giving strengthens our ministries within our community, our region, and around the world. And it's our joy now to have a song by Val. If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place we all can share. For even with our differences, our hearts are much the same. For where love is, we come together. Wherever there is laughter ringing, someone smiling, someone dreaming, we can live together there. Love will be our home. Wherever there are children singing, where a tender heart is beating, we can live together there. Cause love will be our home. With love, our hearts can be a family. And hope will bring this family face to face. And though we may be far apart, can be as one when love brings us together in one place where 
broken Where our vow is never broken We can live together there Cause love will be our home Love will, 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 love will be our home Wherever there is laughter ringing Someone smiling Someone dreaming, we can live together there, cause love will be our home. Where there are words of kindness spoken, where our vow is never broken, we can live together there, cause love will be our home. Love will Would you join me in prayer? Generous God, all good gifts come from you. We freely and joyfully give you these financial gifts, but also our time, our talent, and our heart. Use these offerings for the building up of your work in this church and in the world for your glory. Amen. At loss for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be heard But to hear When you would say Word of God speak you pour down my grave, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. God, you are beautiful. You are almighty and awesome and holy. For your love and gentleness, we give you thanks. You are with us every step of the way. You are our strength. We 
can depend on your capable hands and unchanging character. Your peace calms us. We ask for courage to face the struggles and injustices we see around us and within our own lives. We ask for your grace because we need it desperately. We ask for your healing and your wisdom as we bring comfort to those around us who are hurting. You know the silent needs of our hearts, the unspoken needs in our lives. And we speak aloud the names of the persons who have been listed on our prayer chain this past week. For the loved ones of Hal Walkley, who passed away peacefully on Thursday. For the loved ones of Jerry Lou Rodebaugh, our former organist, who passed away on June 15th. For the loved ones of Jimmy and Bobby, who each passed away and both are relatives down in Louisiana, uh, the relatives of Marilyn Schaefer. And for my dad, Tom Burkett, who is recovering from surgery and waiting on his pathology results. God, we lift up to you these uh, list of folks who are on our longer term prayer chain who have ongoing needs. For Harry, Chris, Norm, Jack, Arlene, Marianne, Susie, Harriet, Tim, Cliff, Robin Claire, Val, Dawn, Leroy and Dot, Sam, Carl, Julie, Lee, Carol, Marilyn, Ron, Kelly, Nolan, Jared, Ray, and Nathan. Loving Lord, we will continue to give you glory and honor and praise, knowing your grace is enough for us and your mercies are new every day. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Finding myself in the midst of you beyond the music beyond the noise and all that to be
Would you pray with me? We love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we're open to your guidance and direction as we worship you here this morning. Enable me to communicate the message you desire, God, to encourage my siblings in Christ and to celebrate your work in us as you build us into the image of Christ in full measure. Thank you for giving us hope when we're at the end of our rope. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it is a joy to be able to share a message with you this morning. Uh, according to the records we could find, it's been a couple years since I've done this. So if I'm rusty, sorry, but you're stuck with me anyway this morning. I think we'll get through this together, won't we? I will begin with our scripture reading this morning. It is from Lamentations chapter 3, and I'll be reading from the message translation. I'll never forget the trouble, the utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. I remember it all. Oh, how I remember. The feeling of hitting the bottom. But there's one other thing I remember, and remembering, I keep a grip on hope. God's loyal love couldn't have run out. His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They're created new every morning. How great is God's faithfulness. The word of God for the people of God. This morning I'll be using the expression repeatedly here about being at the end of your rope. It's an expression that conveys how it feels when you're barely able to endure or cope with a difficult problem or situation. Your strength and your endurance are nearly depleted. Your hope is nearly gone. You may feel vulnerable, and there's no easy fix in sight. You're weary, defeated, empty, depleted, and alone. I love the image in this morning's scripture. I keep a grip on hope. Even when you're at the end of your rope, and your grip on the rope is faltering, you can keep a grip on hope. And this hope stems from God. It's not about being a sunny personality or a glass half full kind of person. It's about having hope that is firmly rooted on the stable, reliable foundation of God's promises and God's fulfillment of the promises that God has made. Are you hanging in there? barely hanging on when we're at the end of our rope it can feel depressing and scary and overwhelming and isolating but the bible says to have hope it's in hebrews 10 23 and this is the easy to read version we must hold on to the hope we have we can trust god to do what god has promised if you're feeling that you have reached the end of your rope it's easy to fixate on that rope you're grasping tightly, you're desperate to hang on, you have a narrow focus. But here's my suggestion. When you reach the end of your rope, reach out. Open your eyes. Open up to the possibilities around you. Look around you, look wide. It's easy to focus on the rope, but there's more than just your rope. When you're at the end of your rope, and you've reached the end, reach out to God. This expression of hanging on to your rope kind of undermines this part that I know I certainly have, and I'm guessing probably many of you do too. It's all about this independence and self-sufficiency and I can take care of this myself attitude. We think it's all about the strength of our grip. Hear this encouragement. It's not about the strength of your grip. It's about the strength of your God. When you're holding on to your rope, God is holding on to you. It's not about my strength. It's about God's strength and whether I choose to trust it. You don't have to succeed on your own power. In fact, most of the time we really don't succeed under our own power. We've all had help along the way. I might be the one speaking the words up here, but the success hopefully, of my talk this morning, hopefully it's successful. That is not my success. I give God the glory. It's not about my ability. It's about what God is capable of doing. Whatever you are going through, whatever you've done,
God is holding you as the precious child that you are. And God's not letting go. Your circumstances may make you feel alone and vulnerable, and you don't know how much longer you can hang on. But you are not flailing wildly in the breeze without help and without hope. You are nestled carefully in the hands of the one who designed you, redeemed you, and delights in you. In the middle of Psalm 23, and I do mean exactly in the middle, there are 26 Hebrew words before this and 26 Hebrew words after it. In the very middle of Psalm 23 is this phrase, for you are with me. Quite literally, that is the heart of Psalm 23's message. God is with us. When you are without hope and you are at the end of your rope, you are within God's presence. You are not alone. The Bible contains a series of encouraging statements that Jesus made. We call these the Beatitudes. And the very first one says this in the message translation. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. It's saying it's a blessing when you're at the end of your rope. I know, it doesn't feel that way. But that's what it's saying. It is a blessing when you're at the end of the rope, when you're struggling under your own power, because that's when you learn to rely on God. If we could manage everything ourselves, how would we have opportunities to learn to trust God more? How would we lead others to trust God because of what they witness in us? Being at the end of your rope is an opportunity to trust God more. So just let that soak in. When you're at the end of your rope, you're blessed. When you reach the end of your rope, reach out to others. It can feel very isolating. Folks who are isolated, meaning they don't have a lot of those strong social connections, have a 50%, not one five, I'm saying 50, five, zero, percent higher risk of premature death. That's a CNN article. I think it's fascinating. We are not designed to live alone. It's well documented that the gracious, compassionate presence of someone else helps us rebound from stress. I'm living proof of this, and I'm making eye contact with some of you that have done that to me in my life, and I thank you. During one of the last meaningful conversations I had with my mom, this is what she told me to do. <laughs> I got this. I'm going to get through this. Don't shut out other people. My mom knows me well. She knows I have a tendency to do that when I'm hurting. Don't you do it. Do not shut out other people. Maybe the rope that you are so desperately clinging to is not your lifeline. Your lifeline might be those people God has placed in your life. I thank God for the people that God has placed in my life who have supported me during the most terrible seasons of my life. Now, to be frank, other people can't fix your situation. They might even clumsily say something that wasn't quite right, or they might hurt a little bit, or you might kind of say, well, I guess they tried. I understand that. Sometimes other people might not say the perfect thing or be able to do the perfect thing or make everything better. Newsflash, I'm not perfect either and neither are you. We're all imperfect people. It's a blessing to have imperfect people in your life. Don't shut people out just because there's a 1% chance they're not going to be able to help. There's a 99% chance their presence will be a comfort to you. Other people can play a vital role in your life. And when you reach the end of your rope, reach out for the next rope. You may very well be at the end of your rope, but this occurred to me a while back. Maybe in your lifetime, you will have more than one rope. Maybe we're not designed to cling to one rope for our entire lives. Maybe there are many ropes. You can't embrace what God has placed in front of you 
if you won't let go of what's behind you. Helen Keller said, when one door of happiness opens, another, or closes, another opens, right? There's more to that quote, though. Here's the rest of it. But often we look so long at the closed door that we don't see the one which has been opened for us. Sometimes, my siblings in Christ, we miss the fresh new chapter because we're still fixated on what used to be. I know change is hard. Not all transitions are the ones we want. It's very common to want to avoid change. But despite how most of us act, the goal in life is not to avoid change. We're either growing or we're decaying. Staying the same isn't an option in life. We can't eliminate all pain or all changes from our lives. But have hope. Just because you're at the end of this rope doesn't mean you're at the end. It may be a new beginning. Maybe not the one you wanted, but this is part of your journey, and God will cause good to come from it somehow, some way, someday for someone. I want you to examine your perspective. When you're feeling weary, defeated, empty, depleted, and alone, reconsider your attitude. Maybe you're not at the end. Maybe you're now in a position to swing far enough to reach your next rope. Maybe being at the end of this rope is the perfect place to be, because if you're dangling and swinging at the end of this rope, you're within reaching distance of another rope. Now, for you visual learners, I do have a small visual aid. Ron, Marina, would you two be willing to come up and help me with this? I'm getting so excited here now. Okay, so we have our demonstrators. Thank you very much. They're each dangling. They're dog leashes, but for our purposes, we'll call them ropes. <laughs> and you can see right now, there's more than one. There's more than one rope in your life. You guys are the perfect distance from each other. I think this is going to work. We're going to see if we're at the end of the green rope, can we reach the red rope? OK, let's give it a try. I appreciate you trusting me enough to come up here. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> you know, if you're hanging on at the top of the rope, you can't reach the next rope. It's when you're at the end of the rope that there's enough room there for you to be able to reach the next rope on your journey. If you find yourself in a dark and lonely place, it may feel like the end. But here's a quote that I saw on Etsy. But maybe you're not buried. Maybe you've been planted. What feels like a graveyard, maybe a garden. Barbara Brown Taylor gives us these comforting words. New life starts in the dark. Whether it's a seed, a baby, or Jesus in the tomb, new life starts in the dark. The present struggle may not be the end, or even your final chapter. It may very well be the first page in a new chapter. Elijah, one of Israel's greatest prophets, could relate to being at the end of your rope. Right after an amazing victory, his life was threatened. He became very depressed. He wanted to die and ended up hiding in a cave after spending time in the wilderness. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we're told that in the cave, God asked Elijah, what are you doing here? Then there was a windstorm, an earthquake, and a wildfire. God's presence was not manifested in any of those, not in the wind, the earthquake, or the fire. 
Elijah recognized God was present after those things in a quiet voice, a gentle whisper. At that point, Elijah stood outside the cave, and again, God asked him, what are you doing here? Now, it wasn't an unsurprise, like you bump into someone in a restaurant, hey, what are you doing here, kind of way. This was a chance to re-examine, what are you doing? I love that before the second invitation, God demonstrated all of this power and might, but drew close to Elijah through that gentle whisper. Perhaps you can relate. For me, sometimes my problems seem bigger than they actually are. And once I get a good reorientation of how big God is, then it's easier to see my problems at their true size and easier to trust God. To Elijah, at that point in his life, he wanted to die. It felt like the end. But it was not the end. It was a time of transition. God refreshed Elijah and gave him his new mission to anoint two new kings and to anoint Elijah's own successor, Elisha. Sometimes the struggle serves a purpose we cannot see. To the seed buried under the cold, dark earth, unable to feel the sun or the wind or the rain, it may very well feel like the end. But in its season, the seed will sprout and grow and flourish. You may feel buried, but perhaps you are being planted. Perhaps what you are experiencing today is making way for your next chapter. In saying this, I don't want to minimize the hurt you're going through. Some of you have shared the problems you're going through, and I ache for you. Others of you, I don't know what's going on in your lives, but I can only imagine how hard life can be for you at times. Please know that this congregation will stand with you, whether you're ready to share or even if you're not. This is a community that will support you. We do not want you to have to go through what you're facing alone. As I was drafting this message, I kept getting stumped by thinking about what's at the end of the rope. Is it a knot? Is it a tire swing? Is the end of the rope frayed? And those of you that know I love word puns probably already see where this is going. You can start groaning anytime you wish. Do not be afraid. I'm going to let that sink in a little bit more. <laughs> Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Have courage. Have hope. The struggle you are in is real. But I encourage you to reach out. Reach out with hope. Reach out to God. Reach out to others. Reach out for your next rope. Because this may very well be not the end, but a new beginning, a new rope for you. Amen. sing and pray however you are led. I think this one might be one you know as well. Feel free to rise. Ron already started it, so now the rest of you have to too. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three, go.
I thank you for the opportunity to share with you this morning. And the benediction I worked on is not on this page. Here we go. I promise it's worth it. <laughs> when you've reached the end of your rope, reach out. Reach out to God. Reach out to others. Reach out for that next rope. Because it is now perfectly positioned to be within your reach. And today and every day, may you joyfully embrace the strength, the peace, and the grace that God gives us so freely. Amen. <laughs>